Welcome back, 5 Minute Fizz fans, and also all of my students that I forced to watch these videos. Uh, today's concept of hormesis is one of my favorite foundational, fundamental principles that I cover in basically every class because it explains so many issues related to exercise adaptation, aging, nutrition, supplementation, etc. Once you understand how this works, you need to under, you can apply it to any concept you're interested in, and that helps clear up a lot of confusion when you're trying to figure out what's good, what's bad to take, to do, etc. I also see people misapply this concept a lot and trick you with marketing. So what you're seeing back here is a basic curve. Okay, and all hormesis really means is at some dose, something might be toxic, for example, but at another dose, it won't be. So a very basic understanding would be, say a particular drug at this level is not toxic, but if you give it to me at this level, it becomes toxic. Okay, now applied to something like water, for example. Okay, here you go. On our horizontal axis, this could be something like health, and on our vertical axis is amount. So if, I, if you are completely dehydrated, right? We all know that your health would be poor or your performance, whatever metric you want here. If I give you a little bit more water or a little bit of water, you start getting better. If I continue to give you more water, you would get better and better and better and performance would go up. But if you're already you hydrated or normally hydrated and I gave you more water, you may actually see discomfort, reduction in performance, poor health. In fact, if I continue to give you that, you might get into what's called hyponatremia or if I continue to give even more, you may actually die. So that in theory, even something like water has a toxicity curve where complete lack of it could be deadly, but also too much of it would be deadly. We call that drowning, right? We could apply this to anything else, vitamins, minerals. Now, vitamins are a little bit easier, especially the water-soluble ones like vitamin C, you'll probably just pee it out. But things like minerals, iron, for example, you gotta really pay attention to this. So if you have an athlete who's here with their iron saturation, and you just say, hey, iron's good for you, it gives you red blood cells, etc." take it. And it actually pushes them in this direction, especially men, you could be having real problems. You could actually be harming their performance, and in theory, you could actually eventually be lethal. Right now, it's pretty hard to do that with, again, vitamins especially, because you probably start throwing up, get sick first. But it could start reducing performance. It could also influence other minerals and vitamins and those are gonna have a heavy or huge influence on your hormone levels. So it may not be quite as dramatic as death, but you can start feeling really bad and performing poorly. Fiber is another one of my favorite examples. Um, I would encourage you to check out Mike Ruscio's stuff. He's done a lot of great things in this area. But here's a good example, right? So if you're too low in fiber, you're constipated. But if I give you too much, well, you know what happens, right? Now in a separate video, I will talk about the pros and cons of high and low fiber situations because I do them intentionally with my athletes. Sometimes I intentionally bring them too low of fiber, sometimes too high, depending on what we're doing. But this is really uh, something that's it's really important to understand. We can do the same thing with oxygen, right? None of you want to be completely void of oxygen, but if I give you all the oxygen in the world, you would actually die immediately. That's how we treat chemotherapy, right? It's super toxic and poison. So that's hormesis. The take home message here is whenever you're gonna recommend, especially things that come into concentration or dosages that are non-natural, pharmaceuticals, drugs, mineral supplements, things like that, be really careful about prescribing someone something if you don't know where they're at on this curve. Because even something that you think is 100% good for you, like water or oxygen, there are no free passes. Nothing is always good or always bad for you. If you're right there, the same thing that would make you feel amazing would make you feel terrible if you're right there. And that, friends and family, is hormesis.